sooner than a lot of folks. Peter Elides is his name. Uh, Peter has an incredible voice, so the deeper, ominous voice uh, tends to <laughs> add to the fear factor here. Um, Peter, good to see you again, my friend. Uh, you're not convinced we're through, are you? How you doing, Neil? Yeah, I'm, I'm doing great. I'm convinced we're through to the downside. No, this is, you know, when we spoke, it was a couple of months ago, uh, Neil, and I told you at that time that this signal, the sign of the bear signal, has been variable in terms of how quickly it takes hold. Back in 1929, we, I think we mentioned it on the show at the time, Indeed. there was a rally of 10 additional percent to the upside on the Dow. Well, guess how far since my appearance, I checked yesterday, Neil, since my appearance with you a couple of months ago, the S&P is up almost exactly 10 percent to the high. And now that was given away in a couple of days. So. Uh, no, are we done to the downside? There's a long way to go to the downside. We're going to get bounces and some of them big and a lot of them will make people think, phew, thank goodness that's over with. But we, if this is truly going to be a bear market, there's a long way to go, Neil. How much longer? <laughs> Well, you know, when we spoke last time, I told you I thought that we were facing a bear market at least as bad as the 07 to 09 bear market. So that was over 50%. That's right. And I, I still think that's going to happen. It's not going to happen in the next six months. But weeks that one at least ha months. had a catalyst, right, Peter? I mean, the concern about financial stability and whether our whole mortgage industry was, you know, a fraud, which it turned out to be. I mean, there are a lot of people that are scratching their heads on this when they argue economic fundamentals are sound, that corporate earnings are robust, 8 out of 10 of the S&P 500 reporting seem to be echoing that. But you look at other things. Explain. Boy, am I, am I glad you brought that up, Neil, because I have a little bone to pick with the guys that were on after me last time. I know it was Stephen Lee and Charles Gasparino, and you referred to my interview, and you asked them, do you, is there anything to what Eliade says about this bear market? And they're saying, no, no, we'll never have a bear market unless, we'll never have a market top unless there are fundamentals that point to it. Well, they're absolutely wrong, Neil. There's no top in history that the fundamentals have pointed to. Go back to January of 73, a huge top in the market. The Barron's headline in January of 73 was not a bear among them, referring to all the experts. If you're a fundamentalist, you're not going to come close to picking market tops. But don't fundamentals change? Like it, I remember that in January of 73, uh, that, 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 that it didn't quite factor in what would be later on an oil crisis, that... Things like that develop over time. That it, are you looking at something that we're missing that will develop maybe weeks, months from now? What? what? Absolutely, because the market leads the fundamentals, although I can't tell you what it's going to be. That's the big trick. If you count on fundamentals to lead you through the, the, the right. volatility of the market deal, you're not going to so, be very successful. So, Peter, successful you follow you charts. You, you, you know, you're one of the, the brightest minds in Wall Street. Whether people agree or disagree with your market forecast, you've been pretty uncanny over the years. So what are you seeing now that a lot of folks are, are, are missing? Well, I'm seeing a couple of things, Neil. First of all, I began to see at the end of last year, towards the end of last year, the kind of churning action that takes place as the market seems to be going straight up. The advanced declines are churning. In other words, there's no big up days, no big down days. The no big up days tells you that there's not the kind of leadership and strength internally in the market that you look for in a continuing bull market. The lack of big down days tells you the sentiment remains very, very high because there are no big down days. Everyone's buying the dips. And speaking of sentiment, how about this, Neil? Some of the numbers that we see from investors, intelligence, people like that, show the greatest number of bulls and the fewest number of bears in the last 30 to 35 years. Hmm. So the whole background is So if you're a other contrarian, because that thing. would be, you'd run the other way if that's how people feel. Um, exactly. But what about all these other derivative products, these outside products? I, I was startled to see this development pick up steam over particularly the last few years, where there are more... ETFs and mutual funds and uh, all these elaborate products that vastly outnumber the number of stocks. Um, it's gotten That's weird, right? 
That's a fabulous point, Neil, because what we're looking at now, someone, I don't know how accurate this is, but I heard, this was a year or two ago, that the derivatives market, the options and the futures and the futures on options, right. is a quadrillion dollar market. In fact, a multi-quadrillion dollar market. That number is inconceivable. That's, that's where the risk comes in, where something like that starts to happen. We've seen the last couple of days a kind of hint of what we may, we may end up seeing ultimately. And the, the interesting thing is, if you don't mind, Neil, let me ask you a quick question. How many people that you've spoken to in the last two or three days are really concerned about this market? What you, percentage? You and say? maybe two others. <laughs> there you go. I'm not it's exaggerating. I think that's thing. about the percentage. Um, that's a huge point to make. It's buy the dip. Don't worry, folks. This is a bull market. There's no bad news. Unemployment's at 15-year lows. We spoke about unemployment last time I was on. The unemployment level down to 4.1 percent the last time it was there, Neil, was the year 2000. What happened after that? The Nasdaq went down 75 percent But is there any group now? That. Now we know the Nasdaq and the Internet bubble that burst and all that. Is there something like that in the works? Of course, I know it's different and there's always a different catalyst, but that we don't see it until after the fact. I frankly think it's all these elaborate uh, ways you could trade off fear and then a counter to trade off of that um, I, that, that, that are going to cause some problems. But, but what is it in your eyes, because I know you're just really a, a chart kind of a guy here, that, that could undo it or that well, we're what, missing? What's been the huge excitement over the last four, five, six months in the financial markets is Bitcoin. Yeah, uh, and and you, you, we see what's happened to that. That led this whole procedure. Remember, I mean, we start to see that. So you come think down Bitcoin is like the Nasdaq bubble? It is a metaphor for this mania, right? V very roughly analogous, but yes, analogous. Yes. Okay. Um, what about the president? And of course, he talked this market up. A lot of people are going to say you should take account for for going down. Uh, I know you're not a political guy. What do you think? We talked about that, Neil, last time, and, and I said, and I agreed with you, if you're going to take the plaudits for the upside, then you're going to take the blame for the downside, too. You know, I always told my kids as they were growing up, and they asked about politics and presidents, I said, presidents get far too much credit when yeah. things go right and far too much blame when things go wrong because they're kind of pawns in the whole overall game that I would look at in terms of long-term economic cycles, Neil. And in terms of long-term economic cycles, there are some arguments you can make that this is the most overvalued market in history. Wow. Despite the, the last couple of days, too, you can still make that argument.